welcome everybody as we're as we're loading in. Um, in just a couple seconds, we're going to run a, a video and then begin the program. One of the staff members at ULI Toronto came to speak at Ryerson University and I just thought you know this is a great way to network and to meet people and to learn more about my city as well because they put on such great programming. To me ULI has been a crucial part of my career development. Four years ago in Kensington Market uh, there was a ULI walking tour where I met a senior city planner and uh, we developed a strong working relationship. That's the great thing about ULI is the opportunity to be uh, with like-minded people in, uh, in the industry. I've personally hired people from running into them at ULI and uh, led to a conversation and it grew into an opportunity to join our company. There are just so many opportunities for people of all ages to get involved as volunteers or just to attend the events and get involved. Great about ULI is if there's that someone you've been wanting to meet and you haven't had the opportunity to do so, the roster of members is open. Take a look at who the members are. If that person's on the list, ask one of the ULI staff and they will make the introduction. Conversations that are happening, everything from the technology side of the business and incorporating uh, you know, UTEC into development uh, and urban planning. That's rare to have that kind of um, an entity that can convene conversations from a whole variety of perspectives so that we can and a push and challenge each other to think a little differently about the solutions that might make a lot of sense. Now that I've been a part of ULI for seven years and then I volunteered for ULI, I, I hardly go by without going to an event and not knowing one person. And sometimes I actually find that um, there isn't enough time during the network portion of an event to talk to everybody that I know there. Join ULI to connect with people in the industry, to grow. Okay, thank you very much. The video came to an end a little abruptly, but uh, my name is uh, Richard Joy. I'm the executive director of ULI Toronto. Those of you who know me probably needed that introduction because my hair is getting a little long, um, but welcome to today's program. Uh, and on behalf of the ULI's management committee and the membership committee, I'm pleased to welcome you to, welcome you to today's session, ULI Toronto Global Leadership, Markham's latest biggest big urban vision, Markham Centre. As a Toronto-based organization, we acknowledge that the land we are meeting on virtually is the traditional territory of many nations, including the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Anishinaabe, the Chippewa, the Haudenosaunee, the Why Not people, and uh, many diverse nations um, from uh, First uh, Nations, Inuit, and Métis people. We also acknowledge that Toronto is covered by Treaty 13 with the Mississaugas of the Credit. We are all treaty people, Many of us have come here as settlers, immigrants, and newcomers in this generation or generations past. We'd like to also acknowledge and honor those who came here involuntarily, particularly those who are descendants from, uh, uh, from those brought here through enslavement. We'll post a link in the chat to a program titled ULI, 13,000 Years of Indigenous History in the GTA and Why It Matters to Planning and Development. We recommend you watching it to learn a little bit of the history and meaning behind our land acknowledgement. Before we begin, I'd like to go through a few housekeeping items. Everybody will be automatically muted throughout the session to ensure that there's no audio interferences. Closed captioning is available for this session. There may be a slight delay and it may not be 100% accurate, so please be patient. If you have any questions for speakers, please use the Q&A function or upvote questions by pressing the thumbs up button. This session is being recorded and will be sent to you following the session. If you wanna take the conversation online, please tag us with the handle at ULI Toronto or with the hashtag ask great questions. I'd also like to extend my sincere appreciation to our annual sponsors. Today's event and all other ULI program would simply not be possible without the support of these annual sponsors. On behalf of ULI, I'd like to thank them all for their continued support. ULI relies on the support of our sponsors to provide quality programming and to help drive our mission of creating and, and sustaining thriving communities. To all of them, I say thank you. Thank you for joining us. Uh, no, sorry, I'm now uh, turning over to uh, Avar Prasad. So, um, uh, who has over 30 years of experience in planning and strategic um, planning and leadership roles. 
His portfolio includes planning and urban design, engineering, building standards and economic growth, culture and entrepreneurship. Arvind leads a dedicated group of city builders to ensure Markham is vibrant, healthy and sustainable community. I will, I will return after the panel to help with the audience Q&A um, and a reminder to put your Q&A in, in the Q&A uh, button and to upvote. And with that, I will turn over to you, Arvind. Great pleasure to do that. Great, thank you, Richard. Good afternoon. I am honored to be facilitating this ULI session today. Today's program is the fourth in a new ULI Toronto webinar series exploring the urban transformations of the Greater Golden Horseshoe's Edge Cities. As a chapter or district council of an international organization with deep roots in North America, ULI Toronto is proud to showcase the urban leadership of cities like Markham. The program today will consist of three parts over the next hour. We'll have remarks by Mayor Frank Scarpitti of Markham, a panel discussion, and a question and answer session with their opportunity to ask, ask questions. During my career in development, I have seen towns that were once suburbs now flourishing into large urban centers. Markham is a prime example of this edge cities phenomena with over 350,000 residents and close to 11,000 businesses. Markham is evolving into a complete urban center with better access to rapid transit, so a significant amount of commercial and retail opportunities, some of the best parks and, and community facilities in the greater Toronto area, and over 1,500 te technology companies. Each, each municipality in the greater Toronto area has its own unique story about how their urban centers formed, evolved, and developed. Today, you will learn about Markham Center's unique story from Mayor Frank Scarpitti and our panel of speakers. Markham will definitely be on your radar if it isn't already. Markham Center has rapidly evolved from an area that was primarily agriculture in the early 1980s to a well-planned area that is experiencing tremendous growth in part due to significant public and private investments. Now I'd like to take a moment to introduce City of Markham's Mayor, Frank Scarpitti, who will provide an overview of Markham Center. Mayor Scarpitti has been the mayor since 2006 and is Markham's longest serving mayor. The mayor also serves on York Regional Council and is the current chair of York, York Region Rapid Transit Corporation and a key champion for the Young North Subway Extension, part of the province's priority transit expansion projects. The mayor has provided extensive leadership in Markham uh, with Markham Center's growth, including leading the development of the Markham Pan Am Center and attracting a Markham campus for York University. Today, you'll be getting a front row seat update from the mayor about our growing downtown. So thank you, Mr. Mayor, for attending today's event and the floor is yours. Well, thank you very much, uh, Arvin, uh, for that kind introduction. I, I think you read it just the way I wrote it. So it's wonderful that you didn't get a chance to, to edit it at all. And it's a great pleasure to be here with, uh, with everyone attending this session. And I wanna say a particular thank you to, to Richard Joy and the Urban Land Institute for this opportunity to showcase Markham and more specifically uh, Markham Center. Uh, those of you that have heard me speak about it before, know that I refer to it as our, our crown jewel in our emerging uh, downtown uh, area. So to your many members, uh, to the new members that have joined and, and just people who are interested about learning uh, about Markham Center today, uh, welcome to you all. And also to our, our members of, of council, some of them I know uh, we're, we're gonna pop in. It's a, it's a busy day today in the city of Markham. In fact, we just finished uh, uh, over two hours session uh, on an update of the Markham Center secondary plan. So it turned out that it's Markham Center Day uh, in the city of Markham today. But uh, I think uh, Arvin, you can acknowledge uh, the, the members of council 
uh, that are here a little bit later on in, in the program. For those of you that, that don't know, uh, Markham is uh, dubbed Canada's high-tech capital. We're the, we're the second largest innovation center in all of Canada, second only to the city of Toronto, and we're Canada's most culturally diverse uh, community. Almost 80% of the people that live in Markham, uh, it's a bit of an oxymoron, but identify themselves as a visible minority. And I tell you, uh, that diversity is a badge of honor for us because we've attracted highly skilled, highly talented people from all around the world. Now, this year, 2021, marks the 50th anniversary of when uh, the, the town of Markham back then was uh, incorporated. And we're as proud about the way that our community is, has evolved as we are about the historic areas, our Main Street Markham, our Main Street Unionville, Old Millican Mills uh, area and Thornhill, just, just to name a few. And, and uh, we treasure those historic areas and, and do a lot to preserve them. Um, as Arvin indicated, our, our population is north of 350,000 people. Uh, we are the largest municipality in York Region and will continue to be over the next uh, 30 years with the population figures that were just released by the Region of York uh, just a few days ago. Now, I'd like to introduce you to our downtown uh, area known as Markham Centre. It's uh, strategically uh, located, of course, uh, in our own city of Markham and certainly within the GTA. And in this slide, if you look, you'll see the, the, pink, the pink symbol, which uh, uh, some refer to as, as a boat. Others have re referred to it. It looks like a warship. I, I like to consider it uh, the love boat. And uh, Markham Center, as you can see, is, is nestled to very two nestled between two major provincial highways, highways 407 and uh, 404. And a focal point of this area is the beautiful uh, Rouge River, which is uh, the key environmental feature in our, our Markham Centre area. And there's very few downtowns that have the luxury uh, of having that natural green area built into, into their core uh, area. So it is a, a crown jewel that weaves itself, uh, the Rouge River does, uh, through a, an impressive greenway system uh, that really is like no other in, in any urban uh, setting. And I'll speak a little bit about how that pay, plays an integral part of our, our planning and uh, how it is the, uh, the center of the table in, in many respects. Now, as you would expect, our downtown area is uh, connected not only with uh, the 400 series highway, but also the Unionville GO station, which will be a future hub uh, for Metrolinx. The enhancements that are happening right now on that GO line will see 15 minute service on that uh, particular line, which is uh, in many respects equivalent to, and depending on the technology that ultimately gets chosen by Metrolinx, as effective as a, a subway. And of course, we also have our, our bus rapid transit system that is uh, part of, of uh, the, the network system, the transportation network system. Again, I'll refer to that uh, a little bit later on as well. And as you can tell from this slide uh, with the 407, you're literally just a few minutes away from Pearson Airport, which again is an integral part uh, particularly for the uh, the business community and the companies and the uh, the high tech companies that call uh, Markham home, it's strategically uh, planned as a mixed use uh, area. It has uh, residential areas, areas for uh, employment and and retail. And if you haven't heard yet, uh, just last year we broke ground on York Region's first public university. York University will be building a new campus right in the heart of Markham Center, and the doors are expected to be open in 2023. Now, in this next slide, you're going to see the boat. And again, I refer to it as, as the love boat, uh, upside down, just to give you a sense of the area that we talk about when we speak about Markham Center and this, the sheer size of, of this area. Um, it's, it's, a, it's 494 hectares, are, are, is, is double than most of the uh, downtowns emerging in other municipalities uh, in the GTA. And I don't mention that just because 
it is double, as, as if that's a, a point of pride. I mention it because of the daunting task that, that we have. So when you rotate the, the boat, the image of the boat, it's equivalent in the area of downtown Toronto, as you can see, from Lake Shore all the way up to DuPont Street uh, between University uh, Avenue and Jarvis Street, just to give you a sense of the sheer scale and, and size. So although large in area, uh, I think you can appreciate that Markham Centre truly creates wonderful opportunities for us to create that place-making important uh, communities and neighbourhoods uh, that would change as you would go through this particular area of Toronto. And again, you would expect the same thing as we evolve to really create a connected and distinct uh, community within Markham Centre. And it is important, it, it truly is important that we create that sense of place, uh, that it is a vibrant uh, community. I've always said from day one uh, with Markham Centre, I do not want it to be just a collection of high rise buildings where, where people drive into their underground uh, parking, go up to their 500 to 700 square foot condo, eat, sleep, go back down, out the garage in, in the morning, and there's never that sense of community uh, on the ground. And I think that's extremely important as we continue to evolve and develop uh, Markham Center. So from a town to a city, as, as Arvin indicated, there's many communities that are evolving in the, in the GTA. And this is actually what Markham Center looked like not too long ago. There's our, our Markham Civic Center with that little uh, water uh, way in front of it, uh, the pond. Uh, you see uh, the Hilton Suites Hotel, which is a, an incredible landmark. Both these buildings um, have, were built uh, several decades ago and literally sat in the middle of, of farm fields. And yes, over time, there's been some development around it. And of course, our uh, Markham Downtown Center plan has evolved over the, the past few years. And just to give you some sense of context um, in terms of the commitment that uh, both uh, the, the town of Markham back then and certainly the city of Markham now continues to uh, apply to this area. We started with a, a plan that was developed by Andres Diwani, the Diwani Platter Zybrick uh, team that responded to the, the city's uh, vision to create a, a new uh, downtown area. And I know that somewhere in this meeting is Regional Councillor uh, Jim Jones. And I just want to say what tremendous work Jim did, uh, particularly in those early days. When you look at this, uh, I have to tell you, the Markham Center was a bit of a fallout in some respects because we were actually part of the Toronto bid for the 1996 Olympics. And we were going to have a, a major sports facility uh, that was going to be built as part of the Olympic bid. And then uh, when that fell through, when, when we didn't win that bid, bid uh, Jim really got focused on saying, well, just because we lost out on, on, on the bid doesn't mean that we shouldn't be thinking about the future of this area. And it became very evident, as uh, he and others so eloquently said at the time, it was the hole in the donut. And it was an opportunity for us to do something special. Now, back then, when we proposed something higher than a single family home back in, in the town of Markham, I can tell you that was uh, faced with some incredible opposition. And uh, we had, and Jim will recall this quite well, a council chamber full of people. And uh, uh, I know we had subsequent meetings where we had over 500 people uh, yelling and screaming at us. What were we doing contemplating high-rise development uh, in the town of Markham back then. And then by the time Andres Diwani and working with the community and our staff, when the vision was created, we had 500 people give us a standing ovation on the vision that we had created for uh, this area. And for you planner types, you'll, you'll also know that Andres Diwani was very uh, center in, uh, in developing the Cornell community, which I know many of you have had a chance to come up and visit and was the true test of new urbanism uh, in, the, in the city of Markham. But as much as the years have gone by, I have to say that the, the same principles 
that were grounded in the original plan are, are still apply today and they're relevant today. We want to have a variety of different uses. We want compact urban form that complements uh, the adjacent community. We want to make sure that we have a plan that, that both embraces the Rouge River, creates some beautifully uh, open landscaped uh, areas and, and squares, and that we have key architectural statements made uh, throughout the plan, that it's safe, that it's convenient, that uh, the community is, is focused again on the ground for the pedestrian and that pedestrian experience, not only for the people that live there, but those that will come there. And of course, easily serviced by uh, rapid transit. Maintaining the ecological and cultural integrity of the Rouge Valley. It, it, it's an incredible uh, feature for us and, and really distinguishes uh, that particular uh, Markham Center with, uh, with the other ones that are developed in, in the GTA. Uh, the key to our success has been the partnership with the development community. And in particular, I wanna say thank you to the Remington Group as largest landowner in the area. They, uh, they have continued to, to work with us and I'll, I know they'll showcase some of the work that they've done. But today in Markham Center, we have 11,600 people uh, living in uh, this area. And we have been active as a landowner as well. The Markham Civic Center was, be, was able to be built there because former mayor Tony Roman uh, had an opportunity to get that land from the provincial government. We also have secured uh, land in recent years that actually allowed for uh, the Markham Pan Am Center, a world-class uh, training center and York University to come to our community. So we've been engaged as a landowner in the area as well. And uh, I have to say, uh, uh, nothing has changed since day one. Our mission is to ensure that we have components of a community uh, that make it a complete uh, community. And uh, we're, we're doing that. And I also wanna say as much as we're a landowner in the area, We've never taken our eyes off the ball in terms of the type of community we want to create. And we're in it for the long game and we're not going to rush uh, the development of our downtown because we recognize that it does evolve over many years. And so creating that wonderful place to live, to work, play, I know it's a cliche, but it truly is something that guides us in everything uh, that we do. Now, the Markham Secondary Plan is a bold and grand document. Uh, it truly has seen um, incremental development uh, uh, happen over the years with the partnership of our land uh, owners. And again, public investment, particularly in transit, has been critical. This pink line shows the bus rapid transit system that goes through uh, Markham Center. You also see the goal line, as I indicated, the enhancements that are happening there and the level of service that will service uh, this area every 15 minutes ultimately. But you know, while a lot of things has changed since 1994, uh, again, we have steadily remained committed to the parks, the daycare centers, the retail, uh, truly what Gen Ken Greenberg uh, refers to as the uh, DNA of our neighborhoods. And I'll let him explain that in his uh, presentation. The city does continue to maintain the Rouge River as the, the system that really is the heart of Markham Center. And we continue to advance that with the first phase of a major uh, trail system. Now the built form also continues to evolve. We're seeing the push for taller uh, buildings. Developments have uh, become larger. And uh, that was evident today when we had an update of our, of our secondary plan. And since uh, 2019, We've embarked on expanding the area. So we've added about 30% uh, to the area, which is increasing the population and the jobs that will ultimately be uh, moving into uh, this area. So everything that's evolved and actually happening on the ground is I think truly nothing of uh, astonishing because we do have the mixed in uses of housing and you can see some of the images of, of what's on the ground uh, today the community amenities and a major public art focal point, uh, which is uh, the pride of, of Markham, but also the pride of, uh, of Canada because it's called the pride of Canada carousel.
This is a multi-million dollar public art installation uh, that's a working carousel. And I have to say, as much as we have pushed uh, the developers in Markham Center for, for design and creating that sense of place, I do have to credit, this was something that Remington came forward on their own to create in, in this community. We've also attracted Canadian headquarters for Aviva, the Y Space incubator that was formed by York University. We've attracted companies like Under Armour, a five-star Marriott hotel, the IBM Software Lab, the second largest IBM lab in the world, and of course, uh, York University campus and the Pan Am Center, which was a host venue for the 2000 and 15 Pan Am Parapan Games and continues to be, I think, one of the most successful legacy facilities uh, since the games with many athletes coming there to train and, and compete. Our own Markham Civic Center was designed by renowned uh, architect Arthur Erickson, again, located in Markham Center. We have uh, built and executed a very robust uh, central uh, heating and cooling system, a district energy system. And uh, really with all that we've done on the district energy side and what we've required the builders to do and what we've done with our own buildings, Markham Center will be the largest lead community in all of North America. And our award-winning Markham District Energy System, which currently serves over 11 million square feet, and a variety of customers, both on the residential and commercial side, uh, continues to, to flourish in this area, providing heating and cooling uh, for all of uh, the buildings. And uh, it really is a testament to the investment that's been uh, made and uh, really will uh, play a key part to ensure that we will reduce the city's uh, carbon footprint uh, along with the higher transit uh, uh, investment that, that we've made and the, the goal lines uh, that uh, will be improved in the area. So again, a very sustainable uh, community. Now, the excitement continues in, in Markham. So there's still uh, lots happening. Of course, I've sp spoken about the, the long awaited York University and I'll say, uh, obviously, we're very excited about having York as, as part of our community. It's going to be a game changer. But as you can see uh, with their building, they are committed to creating a wonderful uh, sense of place with, uh, with their uh, design. So um, in closing, I, I just want to say that there's a lot more to do in Markham Center. But the plan, our policies, revisiting the secondary plan, and with the outstanding commitment of both uh, our, the city of Markham, uh, the region of York with its rapid transit, the province of Ontario with its goal line. Uh, originally, this was uh, slated for about 20,000 people when we first did the plan in the mid nineties. And I'll tell you, we were ahead of any provincial government. Smart growth, places to grow, we helped define that. And since then, yes, the densities have, have increased. And with the secondary plan review now, uh, we're looking at a population potentially of 100,000 people. So again, I think it's a reminder of the daunting task that we have, but truly the exciting opportunity to create an incredible place where people can live, work, and visit. And with that, I'm gonna hand it over to you, Arvin, and thank everyone for their interest in, in Markham Center. Well, thank you, Mr. Mayor, um, and thank you, as always, for not just for the update, but for the passion you show for Markham Center and for the city of Markham. Um, I, I would be remiss if I didn't introduce some of the other members of uh, council who are on, the, on this uh, call today. We have Deputy Mayor uh, Don Hamilton. Also, uh, we have um, Regional Councillor Joe Lee and Re Regional Councillor Jim Jones. We also have Councillor Amanda Colucci. Councillor Reed McAlpine, uh, Councillor Halid uh, Usman, Councillor uh, Alan Ho, Councillor Karen Ray, Councillor Andrew Keyes, and Councillor Issa Lee. So, Mr. Mayor, we almost have a council meeting here today. I know. I don't know if this is legal, but I thank them all because they're all very passionate about this. That's wonderful. So, now you've all heard about the uh, great things that, uh, going on in Markham. 
on Markham Center specifically and what the future promises to be. Many people ask me, why, what makes working in Markham Center such a great thing? For me, there's four elements of Markham Center that I really care about. One is the green aspects of it. The fact is that it's surrounded by the Rouge River. Second, it's an incredible opportunity in the GTA for placemaking. It's a downtown that's centered on a pedestrian friendly built form. Uh, and, a, and a, we're planning a massive uh, uh, development pattern here with lots of density and a, and a public square. Transit, from a transit perspective, our downtown becomes the intersection of movement, whether it's active transportation, bus rapid transit, the GO service, transit is a fundamental aspect of Markham Center. And of course, the big ideas, some of uh, the mayors mentioned them already. Uh, it started with the Pan Am facilities, now home to York University and more to come. The city will continue to work with our partners, uh, which in include the panel members uh, uh, today that you're gonna hear from to uh, further refine the vision for this vibrant and unique downtown. Now, the panel discussion will center around the themes of what makes a successful downtown, placemaking and how to create great public spaces, building up transit to truly connect the downtown, city building and attracting game-changing organizations and complete communities, including affordable housing, uh, mix of land uses and, and amenities. So let me briefly introduce today's panelists and then we'll get into our discussions. So our panel consists of Gary Brewer. Gary is the president of York University Development Corporation. Ken Greenberg. Ken is the principal of Greenberg Consultants. Randy Pettigrew. Randy is a senior vice president of land development at Remington. And Mary Frances Turner. Mary Frances is the president of York Region Rapid Transit Corporation. So now I'm going to start the uh, panel discussion. I see I have all my panelists on the line here. Okay, great. So I'm gonna start with uh, Ken. So let's start with you, Ken, if you're ready. Um, you are, okay, good to hear that. You have uh, advised extensively on Markham Center, Ken, including working on our recent secondary plan. With your vast experience across Canada and other countries, uh, what, what do you believe are the necessary ingre ingredients in su successful downtowns that can be leveraged in Markham Center? So what have you learned from your experiences, Ken? Well, one thing I'll, I'll start with, Arvin, is we are seeing in our city region, the Greater Golden Horseshoe, uh, something which is quite unique in North America, which is the emergence of a regional city of very strong downtowns throughout the region, city centers like Markham. And Markham, as the mayor has pointed out, has been a leader for the past few decades. And I find myself very privileged now to be part of that secondary plan review uh, that was referred to, which is really a great opportunity to take stock of what has been working. And to your question, look to what can be learned from Markham's own experience and looking elsewhere. And so this is a work in progress, but thus far we have identified eight areas and I'm just gonna to refer to them very briefly where we think we can raise the bar as we look forward to the next stage in the evolution of Markham Center. One is on how we move in cities, the mobility shift, putting a much greater <clears throat> priority on obviously transit, walking, cycling, active transportation, um, as that affects how we combine living and working, our physical health, the look and feel of the community. A second is putting the focus on 15 minute neighborhoods, what the mayor uh, mentioned in terms of the DNA, uh, where all of these neighborhoods throughout this very large city center would have a, a viable combination of living and working, but would also have local shopping, uh, social infrastructure, schools, libraries, daycare, community centers that people can actually walk to. Uh, a third is ensuring that there's a variety of built form. Um, density is not only accomplished by tower podiums. There are many ways to achieve uh, 
density to do so in a way that really fosters diversity and inclusion, that makes these neighborhoods family friendly. We're seeing more and more young families raising children in vertical neighborhoods like the ones that are emerging in Markham City Center. And so how do we make that work? Unlocking the Unionville GO station uh, with the advent of all day 15 minute headways, um, the opportunity to really take much greater advantage of that to work with the private sector, but also with Metrolinx and IO uh, to unlock what has basically been a park and ride facility and turn it into a real integrated, uh, intensively developed place and the opportunity to develop a high street that would connect that GO station some 800 meters to an emerging area at Enterprise and Birchmont, which has already become a kind of successful center. Bringing a civic presence into Markham City Center with some civic buildings, uh, with a civic square, uh, and placing that in a position where it can become highly accessible by transit and active transportation. An emphasis on parks and open space. We have never seen, as we're seeing in this moment of COVID-19, how important those public spaces are, how intensively they're being used. So how can we make Markham Center become greener and more generous in its public spaces as it becomes denser? And how do we lead with that public realm? Not have it occur at the end of the development cycle, but actually be out in front. And finally, I'm going to end with the great sleeper in this picture, which the mayor mentioned, and you did as well, Arvin, which is the three kilometer branch of the Rouge River, which for all intents and purposes is hiding in plain sight, right in the middle of Markham Center. So turning this river and its valley into the heart and soul of this emerging downtown area, contributing a real sense of place the opportunity to be in the city, in the heart of nature, to move beyond mitigation and protection to making the human presence possible at the same time with, that we show great respect for nature and leveraging the riverbank, the trails, um, its natural spaces to really become what its true potential is, which is to become the organizing spine of the city center. So those are the, some of the things that we're starting to focus on. We're in a preliminary stage in this planning exercise and we really look forward to um, continuing the dialogue and the conversation with all of the actors who have a keen interest in the future of Markham City Center. Well, um, Randy, when uh, Remington Group was uh, consolidating the land and you're, you are the largest landowner in Markham Center, I'm sure that green spine and the, and the incredible attributes it provides for this downtown was something that Remington considered. Can you, uh, and, and Dwayne actually did the plan for uh, Markham Center. Can you uh, talk a bit about how that evolution has happened from that Dwayne plan to what's happening today? Sure. Um, it's interesting. Every time I do a presentation on Markham Center or downtown Markham or, or what's going on, I always start with the Diwani plan. To me, without that plan, a lot of what we're talking about today in this specific context would not have happened. Uh, you have to remember back in the 90s, uh, for those of us who are around back in the 90s, um, there was rapid growth in the 905, but that growth was all single de detached uh, residential neighborhoods. You know, you take a thousand acres and you, you put a plan on it and away you go. Uh, single story uh, industrial buildings. As a matter of fact, we probably built uh, 100, 150 single story industrial buildings. And I think we use the same plan for every building. Uh, that's what was happening. So along comes Diwani uh, and the city of Markham and they, they produced this plan. Well, the plan was radical. Back in the nineties, this was a radical concept. Anything over two stories in the 905 from a development perspective, was you wouldn't even consider it. But having said that, you had a very determined Markham Council, you had a very focused Markham staff, and you had a somewhat willing developer. I say that tongue in cheek. Um, we always joke about it internally that you know uh, our principal 
was pushed by his compatriots in the development industry to, you know, perhaps do something a little bit more straightforward, uh, perhaps another subdivision, um, but he stuck to it, he kept going. And, you know, when you look back at it now, it's amazing what impact that plan had. Now, moving forward, people say, well, your plan today doesn't look anything like it. And no, it really doesn't. Uh, as a matter of fact, I probably have 15 versions of the downtown, our plan for downtown Markham in my office. Every version was better than the last version. Every version we thought was going to be the best. So what has it taught, taught us? A, don't fall in love with your ideas uh, because you're just gonna get disappointed with it. Um, keep true to the goals. So Dewani established some concepts that don't necessarily translate in a two dimensional image that, he, that the mayor presented in his uh, presentation. His concept was creating a community, creating a mix of uses, creating commercial, residential, office, all in one neighborhood. The neighborhood is key. But what's, what's the issue with this? Well, the issue is you, you can lose sight. We can build great residential buildings. We can build office buildings, commercial buildings. But if we're not careful, we can create islands in the sky. We can create exactly what the mayor so eloquently put, a, a place where people drive home at night, they park underground, or they get off the, the GO train, they go up to their unit, they spend the evening, and then they repeat it over and over again. It's a perpetual groundhog day. So what's the challenge? How do we get those people out of those units, out of those offices, and on the street? Public spaces are the connective tissue that makes this a truly vibrant downtown community. Now, that was what Duwani was getting at. So when you look past the images, if you, there's more images than what we always look at in just in terms of that one slide. There are images that he produced that show people on the street, people congregating. So then it says to me, okay, what is a public space? What is a great public space? It doesn't have to be a park. It doesn't have to be a square. It can be a terrific sidewalk. It can be the forecourt of a building. It can even be a commercial patio. Some of the best public spaces are commercial patios. So what makes it great? Well, the answer is in the name. Public space, public, people. Without people, none of it works. I mean, as a developer, we invest a lot of money, time and effort in our commercial spaces. What we've realized is that if we don't get public out and enjoying this community, feeling connected to it, it's not going to work. It's going to end up being, as the mayor put it, a series of isolated buildings that really have no connection to each other. So the challenge moving forward is to make sure that whatever we do, we keep a focus on the importance of creating this community. It, and it, a community, what I've learned over time, and probably I'm slower than most on this, is that the community is just not residential people. During the day, our community is office people. It's people who work in the shops, people who visit the shops. Our community changes depending on what's going on. But that's terrific. That's what a downtown really should be. And, you know, moving forward, I'm not afraid of height. I'm not afraid of density. I'm not afraid of mixing it up. But we cannot lose focus of what happens on the ground. How do we get those people out, engaged in the community, and make it their own? Thank you, Randy. You still remain so passionate. Mark I know, Marcus I can't Center help but I get carried away. <laughs> so uh, we're going to move on to a transit and I'm going to talk. Uh, Mary Francis, you're the person responsible for bringing transit to this vibrant urban area. Can you share your thoughts about how transit is going to evolve and grow in Markham Center? And you're on mute, Mary Francis. Thanks, Arvin. Uh, great pleasure to be here today. Um, when I arrived um, on the scene back actually in 1995, so when I arrived uh, in Markham uh, to start off uh, as a Commissioner of Development Services, um, the Diwani uh, charrettes had unfolded and now it was how do you actually take that empty field out there and start putting together the foundational pieces to ensure that Markham Centre could unfold. 
and uh, the mayor has spoken so eloquently about the commitment and the long-term vision um, that it has taken to arrive from those early days in the in the early 90s to where Markham Center is today, that drive to uh, to move towards that long-term vision, ensure that in the foundational pieces were in place. It took uh, it took the, the the developers of the day, the Rudy Braddies of the day, to buy into that vision and to drive towards that vision uh, throughout the life of the project. To go out and pursue foundational uh, employment uh, centers. Um, that can only be created with legacy buildings such as the IBM building or the Aviva building, the Motorola building, all of these pieces, the university now coming together around this creation of placemaking. And um, I'm happy to say that really um, Rapid Transit um, birthplace was really here in, in Markham, in Markham Center. At the time, Mayor Cousins looked at me and said, well, you know, we've got kind of the foundational pieces for urbanism sort of coming together, but how are we going to get the rapid transit piece attached to this infrastructure? You need to figure out how to put rapid transit on the ground. And so um, uh, I found myself slowly pulled into a vortex um, uh, that uh, became uh, my, uh, my, my work over the last uh, 20 years, which is um, the deployment of the rapid transit system, um, starting with uh, the, uh, the bus rapid transit versus light rail transportation debate that we had inside uh, Markham Center and a great, a great time that we had, but we landed on a vision for rapid transit for York Region and for Markham Center. And you can see it today in the photos that we've shown here how it's wrapping around the building, how it's intrinsically connected to the transformation of the community where live and work are truly knit together as a connected street with rapid transit playing a central role where you just walk out your door and it's available to you. Um, and that along with a 15 minute all day go service is truly going to allow this transformation to, to be enabled um, because people don't need to think about uh, having that second or third car, they can literally walk out their door and got to get on any mode of, of different styles of transit, besides hopefully walking or biking um, along the Great Rouge River to get to the places that they need to get to. So the vision is very much in play um, uh, and, and continues to unfold and, and help connect these, uh, these great places within Markham Center. And uh, we've been very pleased and proud to be a part of helping deliver on one of those foundational pieces. Thank you, Mary Frances. Gary, I'm assuming that 15 day go service in the future is gonna be absolutely essential for York University as we're moving uh, students throughout the region. So based on that, um, York Region makes a uh, significant investment in Markham and Markham Center. Can you, can you give us uh, your thoughts, Gary, in terms of why, why did York University locate in Markham Center. I'm sure you've had a few other options, but we'd like to hear from you on this. Thanks, Arvin. It's, it's a great question. Um, and I, I can say that it actually um, it was a very deliberate decision that was taken by the university. It was a very intentional step that we took. And it actually goes back uh, several years now. Um, in late 2013, early 2014, the province of Ontario uh, announced um, a new framework for major capacity expansion and indicated that they would be putting out a call to post-secondary institutions for them to come forward uh, with proposals for where new campuses uh, could be built in the province. I think York from the outset knew that we wanted to be part of that process. Um, but I think we also felt that it, 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 it could be something different, something special. And so we basically uh, looked at it as, a, as an opportunity for city building. We saw it as an opportunity to take a different approach to campus design that, that prioritized the integration of that shared academic and urban context. So where, where faculty, staff, students uh, could study, work, play, live, socialize, um, engaging with the, with the local community, being part of that surrounding uh, of the campus. We wanted strong ties uh, to the municipality and the region, of course. Um, we also wanted strong ties to industry. 
We saw this as an opportunity for new programs to be developed that would be responsive to the needs of the, 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 the industries in York Region, um, opportunities for experience, experiential education for our students, really with a view to creating that talent pipeline from the university um, uh, to the industries that need uh, the graduates that we would be preparing. We also saw it as an opportunity to partner with uh, public and private sector partners to help provide the, the high quality experience that we were looking for. So all of those things together, of course, is <laughs> a very ambitious agenda. Um, and so uh, as we move forward to help us select uh, the best partner, the best location for the proposal that we would eventually put to government. We put together um, what I think would be considered a very strong team, internationally recognized team of land planners, campus planners, urban designers, transportation planners um, to really help us move through this process. Um, and through the work of the team that we put together, we actually came up with 10 principles and associated evaluation criteria that we could use to, to ultimately decide where the best place to locate the campus in York Region would be. Um, I won't go through all the principles, but just to, to highlight a few, because I think they, they resonate with some of the themes that we've been hearing from the mayor and the other panel members. But the very first principle is to be the anchor of a vibrant new urban center. Um, second principle is to be easily accessible um, by multimodal transit. Um, another principle, be a catalyst for private sector development. Uh, particularly important was, um, you know, defining an identity through a physical presence um, in this urban center. So these were the kinds of things that, 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 that we looked at. We got five um, uh, proposals come forward from different municipalities uh, in York Region. They were assessed against these criteria um, and ultimately through this process, uh, Markham Center um, was selected. Um, and we then moved forward through that provincial uh, process. Uh, and ultimately, I'm, I'm, I'm always proud to say that of the 19 proposals that went forward to the government uh, in the 2015 awards, Markham Center, York University campus was the only one that was actually accepted by the province at that time for a new campus. So it certainly does suggest that, that, that we did get something right. Um, and right now we've got a $275 million uh, construction project uh, now underway. It is right next door to the Pan Am Center. It's right across the road from the Carruthers School. It's immediately to the north of the YMCA, the Unionville GO Station. Uh, we are plugging into Markham District Energy. Um, as the campus grows up to a thousand parking spaces will be provided through the city of Markham. Um, and next month, uh, we will be releasing a request for submissions to try to find a private sector partner to work with us in the development of a student housing and amenity uh, facility to support the campus. So it's, uh, it's early days in the story, but it's an exciting one. Um, and I would be remiss as well before closing is to say um, and acknowledge that one of the members of that initial team that got us, uh, you know, forward on this path was actually Ken Greenberg. And I'm dying to ask Ken if we got it right, but I don't know if we have time. Well, thank you very much, Gary. We'll see if we have time at the end. But uh, we, we are so excited to have York, York University here at the city of Markham. And I know the mayor is. So I'm going to ask the mayor, actually, to get, give them the difficult task of, uh, of giving uh, some thoughts around uh, wrapping up what you've heard, Mr. Mayor, and uh, what you see in terms of creating a great public place in Markham Center. Well, I'm going to be quick because I do want to get to some of the interesting questions that we've received. And, you know, at the end of the day, uh, I want Markham Center to be that showpiece. Uh, I want it to be the greenest community in all of North America. I want it to be one of the most vibrant places where when you, as I said, whether you're driving by in the 407 or you happen to be on that GO train as it's going through Markham Center, you look over and you go, what's, what's that all about? I got to go see that. And, and at the end of the day, I think, again, we've got to deliver the, the critical components. Um, the, it's going to be the open spaces, uh, as uh, Ken said. Uh, the Rouge River has always been a part of the plan. We want to make sure that we're not turning our back, that it's integrated and, and it breathes with uh, the, rest of, uh, the rest of the community. 
uh, and also making sure that employment is there. A uh, big part of the Markham Center is, is attracting those jobs uh, because I think Randy had it right. Uh, the, only, the only way you get uh, to be a vibrant place is with people. You can have some interesting buildings and it could be an interesting collection of buildings, but if you don't have the people, you know, at the end of the day, I'm not sure how exciting it, it really is. So employment and, and getting those jobs there are critically important. And then affordable housing. And, and we've done a lot. We had a, an affordable housing summit, recognizing that this is probably uh, one of, the, well, it is the most expensive uh, real estate uh, in the city of Markham and uh, probably one of the most expensive uh, pieces of real estate in the GTA. But, you know, within that context, making sure that there's the provision of, uh, of affordability uh, and whether that's through rental, uh, whether that's through some ways of, of providing relief uh, to the developers to be able to provide affordable housing, that's got to be a component of this. And uh, certainly the student housing uh, that, that Gary just talked about will, will also be uh, a way of delivering um, homes and, and, and units that uh, can be used for, uh, you know, uh, not only students, but others in, in the community as well. It's critically important. So it, it's got to be that, that showpiece and uh, incorporating all of that along with the, the transit investment that, that was talked about. And, and so it's not just for the people that live there, not just for the people that work there. It's got to be a draw for the rest of the community. And if we haven't achieved that after we're all finished, then, uh, then we've missed the mark. But certainly when I see the plans, the, the, the structure that Randy talked about, about that original Diwani plan, and to be honest with you, what developers have come forward with, because uh, they have also pushed uh, the envelope with many of the things that they've done in creating those, uh, those amazing spaces. So I'll leave it at that for now, because I know we want to get to these questions as well. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and thank you to all the panelists. I'm going to send it over to you now, Richard, and see if you have time for a couple of questions. I'm not sure if you really do, but over to you, Richard. Richard, you're on. Oh, oh was, I, was I on mute the whole time? Yeah. yeah. Am I on mute still? No. You're good. My apologies. My apologies. Um, um, we are, we are, we are low, we are low on time, time, but let me see if I can get one question, question here. With all the development going from Markham Center to Main Street, Unionville, who wants to take that? Is that a Mary Francis? Maybe not. Part of you your know, question was uh, was lost there. I think the question was, can we get to different parts of Markham from Markham a Center? Shuttle. Yeah, shuttle to Unionville. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think one of the key things that uh, has has evolved in the whole mobility movement is that first mile, last mile, or getting between places. Um, and so you'll see um, that uh, as York Region Transit has continued to evolve, micro transit, which allows for those smaller movements, is really um, going to be a, a normal part of our future, allowing people to, you know, either get to Markham Center from their home without needing to get their car or to get from downtown into, you know, Unionville Main Street um, by way of uh, by, by, by way of small uh, micro vans that will allow for those moves to happen without needing a whole bus route to make that possible. Okay, thank you. We are going to have to wrap up here, but there are a number of questions that we have not got to, obviously, and I apologize to the audience for that. That's probably we should have designed a three hour <laughs> webinar here. However, we are going to see if our panelists could help us with um, answering these questions in writing and we'll circulate them to everybody afterwards best we can. So um, with your indulgence, we'll call, cut it off there. Closing remarks, um, just to say on behalf of Eli Toronto, our membership committee, I wanna thank Merrick, Merrick Scarpiti, Arvin, Gary, Ken, Randy, and Mary Francis for speaking to us about the Markham Center. Um, I want to thank uh, all our guests for tuning in today, and we hope that you'll all keep well, and we look forward to having you in a future webinar. Thank you all, and enjoy the rest of 
your day and week. Bye-bye.